Okay, great. So hopefully you can, that, that's clear, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be relying quite a bit on, uh, obviously, like um, audio cues for teaching. So I'd like you to set yourself up with the bolster along the top edge of your mat. We're going to come into a resting pose to start with. So we can start to cultivate some mindfulness. And I suggest you come into a position where the soles of the feet together. This will be a familiar pose, Supta Baddha Konasana. A little bit of support for the head could be good also. And soles of the feet together. Let your uh, inner legs open or let the legs release, stretching there gently, opening across the front of the pelvis. The hands you can rest onto your body or down by your side. And we're gonna move into this sequence. It's gonna be, as I said, loosely drawing from the low back sequence. So I'm not gonna do the whole of the low back sequence. Uh, I wanted to do a more of a mixed class. Okay, so a mixed style class. So there'll be a bit more yin practice in the session. So we're gonna start the session with, uh, in a way, a, a revisit to these five aspects of mindfulness that we've been focusing on for the last few years in, in Bodhi Yoga, which are based on the, the classical four foundations. So we're gonna start off with our experience of the body as a whole. So I'd like to tune in with the whole body experience. So getting a sense of the space that you're in, the temperature of the room, perhaps the atmosphere of the room sense of warmth, the coolness, sense of the light. Whether it's bright or dark. And then being aware of your body in that context, in that space. Tuning in with your sense of energy this evening whether you're feeling uh, or how you're feeling physically, getting a sense of that. I like to tune in with more specific aspects of your bodily experience. So like for me, this is most obvious, this pose in the inner legs, across the inner legs, sense of uh, stretch there. And also feel the lower section of the spine and to some extent the upper back and even gently across the upper chest area. I like to feel for yourself what's going on in your body more specifically, tuning in with different areas, clarifying, which parts of the body this pose is working. And then tuning in with your mood, sense of how you are. So we're in this yoga practice space, perhaps familiar, perhaps not so familiar. online, but each of us in our own room, our own sanctuary, if you like. But sharing the yoga practice together. Getting a sense of your mood, so we can come back to that during the session. I now to tune in with this quality that we emphasize, which is uh, one, one of a process of transformation, which we can experience through the body, through 
the heart, through the mind. We can talk about a continuous unfolding experience. A sense of letting go into that process as it unfolds. Ever changing. This quality of impermanence, anitya. Experiencing that as directly as fully as you can. And then for the last few moments in this posture, coming into awareness of the breath. The last five breaths is a feeling of breath. So a lot of the practice that you, this evening, we're gonna be moving with the breath, but right now we're in a static pose. Feeling the breath in your body. And um, for the, to, to keep this relatively simple, this session, I'm gonna just encourage you to breathe freely. So we're not gonna do any kind of special breath. Just let your body breathe. Like over the course of the weeks, we can explore different kind of breaths, including pranayamas. But for now, just this evening, we're gonna go with uh, whatever happens with your breathing, noticing what's happening. Okay, and then from there, I'd like you to bring the soles of the feet onto the floor. So you're in a supported semi-supine, but then we're gonna roll over. So if you're on the support, being aware of the height, rolling over to one side, you're gonna move the support out the way for now. And come back down onto your back, now in semi-supine. And then floating your knees up. This would be a really familiar movement, Apanasana. As you inhale, you're gonna float the knees away from you. And as you exhale, you're gonna float the knees towards you. Very simple, very gentle. Allow the breath to float the knees away and to draw the knees towards you on the exhale. And floating away from you on the inhale. So we'll do that seven or eight times. Tuning in with your breath, allowing the breath to lead the movement. And then from there, we're gonna extend the legs out along the floor. Placing the hands gently behind the back of the head. You can interlace the fingers. Bring the inner legs together, the inner feet together. And then with the exhale, you're gonna gently pick up a straight leg and look towards your foot, one of the legs. On the exhale, release back down. So, sorry, you can do this either with the inhale or the exhale, doing the lifting. Maybe it makes more sense with the exhale. We lift the leg like a foot off the floor, foot length off the floor, keeping the leg straight, alternating both legs. And the head is being supported by the hands, projecting down the straight leg like a, a very gentle toning for the front of the body, projecting through the sole of your lifting leg, looking towards that foot as you re release back down on the, the other phase of the breath. Exhale, suggest the lift. Inhale, release me now. 
finding your own rhythm with these movements is definitely going to be a slowing down uh, for some of us. But we're looking to work within the pose. Okay, so this there is toning happening with this movement. As you exhale, you're projecting through the lifting leg. You'll feel a tone through the whole of the front of the body. As you inhale, release back. You don't need to lift the foot very high yet. So we're lifting about a foot length off the floor. Okay, then releasing back down. I want you now to come back into semi supine. We'll float just one knee towards us, interlacing the fingers over the knee. As you exhale, floating the leg towards you. On the inhale, floating it away, keeping the contact between the knee and the hands, the hands and the knee. Floating in on the exhale, floating away on the inhale. So this is like a half apanasana. Feeling that the other foot is grounded and broad, lengthening the toes. Feeling that foot alive to the floor. And switch to floating this foot down, floating the other leg up, interlacing the fingers over the knee as you exhale, folding in. Inhale, floating away. So aware of the changing sensations, aware of the body as a whole, but being aware with each movement, with each posture, more specific aspects of your body experience. Where's this pose working? Where do you feel this in your body? And releasing back into semi supine, connecting with the breath. And then we're going to roll now over onto the front of the body and into all fours. Coming into all fours. And as we say, you can either tuck the toes under here or have the tops of the feet on the floor. It's up to you. So it's a very simple um, six point pose. I'd like to emphasize uh, moving the pelvic area and the lower back. So as you exhale, you're going to draw the belly in to a certain extent and on the inhale lengthen from the pubic bone through to the throat area so you're lengthening the front of the body the feet grounded so it's either tops of the feet or uh, the toes tucked under big toe to little toe grounded but the palms grounded sense of lengthening the fingers lengthening the thumbs as we inhale Looking forwards, looking up as we exhale, looking back, rolling the pelvis back. So taking your awareness into the lower section of the spine. Inhaling into extension, exhaling into flexion. And we're doing seven or eight movements here. So it's, although the rhythm of this sequence is relatively slow, uh, it is, there is movement. There's a, there's a sort of continuous movement throughout. Coming back into a neutral spine, all fours. I'd like to bring your knees now together, inner legs together, hands still underneath the shoulders. And we're going to come into tiger stretch. So as you exhale, you pick up one of your legs, bringing the head towards the knee, and you inhale. Reach forwards with the opposite arm to the leg. Exhale. Bringing the same leg in. So we'll do five times on each leg. Inhale. Reaching forwards, reaching out. 
as you exhale, drawing the leg in, three, four, As you're reaching forwards with the hand, turning the hand towards the medial line. So on the fifth extension here, hold the pose for, for a moment. Clarify lengthening through the lifting leg and reaching back. So I'm just gonna see what's happening here. Okay, breathe there. So we're looking for a sense of lengthening through the center of the body from the back foot to the forward arm. You can turn your fingers into the medial line. Sense of balance there. Exhale, all fours, and release back just briefly into child's pose. The forehead comes down. Inhale into all fours again. Checking your knees are more or less together. This will help with the balance. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So you're exhaling, drawing the leg in, lifting in. Inhale, reaching forwards with the opposite arm as you reach back. Five times, inhale, folding it, uh, reaching out, exhale, folding in. Breathing now. Four. So when you come into your fish, fifth uh, extension, stay there, pause there. Just check that you're lengthening also through the neck. So the gaze I suggest is slightly down. And you're reaching out through the forward arm, turning the palm in towards the medial line and you're reaching back through the back leg sense of the pelvis level as much as you can. Breathing now and then release on an exhale, coming into all fours and release now down into child's pose. I'd like you to completely surrender to the floor there. Letting go for a few moments, recheck with the whole body and with a sense of the mood. with a sense of your changing experience. So noticing how your mood shifts, how your experience of the body shifts, sensations in the body are changing. Being aware as fully as you can directly of this quality of change, amitya, impermanence. Okay, we're going to come into all fours again. So now comes what we call, it's like a lumbar spine mm, lengthening movement. Okay, so I'm just going to describe it. Uh, those of you who've done this with us, you'll remember this. So you're, there's a sense of uh, drawing the tailbone as it were, the coccyx through the legs. So you're really trying to uh, um, draw the belly in and move back slowly, really lengthening through the lower part of the spine. So it's a, a, a flexion of the spine. And then the, the, the buttocks don't necessarily touch the heels. And then you come back up, gently move forward. So you don't need to move forward very much. To a very gentle extension and you again move back so you're moving back with an exhale where you roll the pelvis strongly back so you strongly antivert the pelvis looking for a sense of length from the sitting bones through to the palms and then repeat so do that five or six times one way of helping with this is to really ground the palms Grounding the palms, tipping the pelvis back and diverting the pelvis. That is, that, yeah. Tipping it backwards. 
It's got to be retro version, isn't it? Okay, and then coming forwards again to a gentle extension, rolling the pelvis back as you move back, looking for a sense of stretch through the lower section of the spine. So from the muscles that run off the lower ribs onto the pelvis. The, pel the pelvis not necessarily coming all the way to the heels, the buttocks not necessarily coming all the way down. Emphasizing rolling the pelvis back, so lifting the front edge of your pelvis, tailbone drawing through the legs, looking for a sense of stretching through. Um, so certainly towards the end of the movement. Okay, we'll do that one more time. Tipping the pelvis back, keeping the palms grounded, rolling the pelvis back. Okay, and then once again, come into all fours. Now we're gonna rest down again into child's pose, but this time I'd like to thread your arms through the legs. So you're bringing the arms in between your legs, resting the forehead down. Again, surrendering to the floor. Breathe there for a moment. Listening to your lower back. So this sequence is uh, in a way a practice where we're trying to get into dialogue with or into relationship with the lower section of the spine. Lower section, lower back, hips, pelvis, upper legs, legs even. So taking awareness into that area. Another gentle um, warming pose from here. So take your arms out and place the palms on the back, on the backs of the palms on the sacrum. So you're in, still in uh, child's pose. So we'll remember this as Vajrasana. So, so there's like three aspects on one breath. So as you inhale, you're gonna lift the chest, take the arms, into the cactus position and even take the gaze slightly up as you come up and then as you exhale you're sweeping the arms back engaging the legs the head comes down the backs of the hands back to the sacrum it's on the exhale so we'll do that a few times coming up on the inhale so you're lifting up the whole body engaging the thighs taking the gaze up uh, forearms going into the cactus position. Exhale, releasing back down. On your own breath, into child's pose with the backs of the hands resting on your sacrum and then coming up again. We'll repeat that a few times. Looking for a smooth transition. So you can look up and open the chest as you inhale. So it's like an opening movement for the upper back. But I'd say what we're focusing on here is the work through the legs and pelvis. On the inhale, we're coming up. And on the exhale, we're coming down. Inhale, coming up. Exhale. Releasing down. So we'll do three more cycles. Feeling that the tops of the feet are grounded. Next time you come up, uh, a little bit separating the knees as you exhale. I want you to just uh, slide the arms back through the legs again. So you're coming into child's pose with the arms once again in between the legs. So it's like a variation of child's pose. That's really not very comfortable for whatever reason. Then take a more familiar child's pose. Allow your forehead to rest into the floor. Releasing now completely. 
letting go. Tuning in with your breath, tuning in with any warmth in the body. And noticing the specific uh, texture of this variation of Valasana. For me, it feels good on the upper back area, actually the upper back, upper arms, and the deltoids. Helping to release tension from that area. Surrendering to the floor for a few breaths. Okay, we're gonna come out. Once again, now we're going to come into a prone position. So we're going to come down, belly onto the floor. Okay, hopefully I'm fitting in. Yeah, okay. So, the Masana, I want you to bring your hands back. So, uh, about level with the lower ribs, the elbows tucking in, and then bring your feet into the center line. So uh, we're going to do a simple movement here where you, as you breathe in, this will really focus the energy and the work into the lower back, buttocks, pelvic area. So as you inhale, you separate your legs and look forwards, lifting the legs and lifting the chest, keeping the elbows in. As you exhale, you gather yourself back into the center line and release down. So that's one cycle. Inhale, we lift separating the feet, lifting the gaze as you exhale, release down, back into the center line. So you can repeat this like eight or 10 times, depending on what our body is happy to do. Just, it's a strong movement, although it's not, doesn't look like much is happening from the outside. There's a lot of sort of internal lifting could say as you breathe in, separating the legs on the inhale and gathering back into the center line on the exhale. Vimasana. The elbows gently tucking in, the palms grounded. Inhale. Lifting, separating the legs, lifting the chest, taking the gaze forwards. Next time we inhale, I want you to come into all fours. And then exhale, rest back into child's pose. Take a pause there. So another position for child's pose is resting the head on the hands. If you enjoyed putting the arms between the legs, you can go back to that position. Breathe there for a few moments. So in this uh, sequence, it's the first low back sequence from our uh, therapy sequences. There's this emphasis on Shalabhasana, this pose that we're doing now. So let's inhale, come up into all fours again. Exhale, drop back down into prone, belly onto the floor. Extend your legs, lengthen down through the legs, forehead down. Uh, hands in the same position, so around the lower ribs, thumbs close to your body, elbows in. This is alternating, uh, lifting one leg at a time. So as you inhale, you lift the gaze and lift one leg. You don't need to lift very high. It's more about lengthening through the legs. So as you're engaging the muscles down one side of your body, as you exhale, we release down and switch to the opposite side. So now we're alternating. Inhale, lengthening down the leg, lifting the gaze, exhale, releasing down. Sense of the palms grounded. Sense of the, even the hip bones, front of the pelvis grounded, the lower ribs grounded, the belly to a certain extent grounded. 
and we're alternating between two sides of the body. So you can have your feet close together or, or like hip width, but they're not, they're not going wide now. The feet are staying in line with their own hips. Alternating between the two sides. Having a sense of the elbows tucked in, the palms grounded. And once again on an inhale, coming into all fours, lifting up. And on the exhale, resting back into child's pose. Whatever child's pose uh, works for you, resting down for a few moments there. Releasing the neck, releasing around the shoulders, releasing down through your spine, aware of the lower back, pelvis, the legs. And then I'd like you to come up and turn around onto your back. So you're coming now into supine position. So resting the whole of the back on the floor. So do a little bit of work now to tone the front of the body, okay? So again, interlacing the fingers, this is like a build up on what we did right at the beginning, like hip balance. And to float your shins parallel to the floor, feet together, more or less parallel to the floor. And your knees can be a little bit separated. So what we're going to do is we exhale, we're picking up the head very gently. It's more like drawing into the center line or through the center line. And then as you inhale, rest down. Okay, so as we Exhale, it's not a pull up, okay? So it's more like picking up using the front of your body, a curl up, curling in, down through your center. And as you inhale, you release back down. Really gentle with your neck, okay? So the hands are supporting the weight of the head. We're not pulling up with the arms. It's like drawing down the center line curling up, feet stay together, the feet together, knees a little bit separate. So you will feel this engaging the abdominal area. In some ways it's best done gently and slowly. So you can really feel what's going on around the front of the body, around, particularly around the belly, solar plexus area. A sense of gathering to uh, down the center line, gathering into your center. And then when you're already coming into stillness, Resting into semi-supine, let your hands rest to your side or onto your body. Breathing freely. Feeling the floor. Feeling any warmth that you've generated in the body. Letting your breath come back to a gentle rhythm. And then from there, again, once again, turning back onto your belly, just gently turning round. So we're facing the floor now, once again. 
I'm going to come into uh, a variation of Shalabhasana. So I'd like to take each leg, lengthen down each leg, take the arms back and interlace the arms. So the wrists, as you know, you can separate the wrists so you can try and bring the hands together, which is much more intense for the shoulder area. It's up to you. So the thumbs can rest down onto the buttock, so you can try and lift thumbs away from the buttocks. So the movement is on an inhale, we lift the legs, lift the chest, lift the arms. If you're lifting the arms away from the body and we breathe there. So it's a static hold. So you feel the whole, of the back of the body engage. Breathing there and then release. Down, we're gonna repeat three times. Shalabhasana, so you can have your wrist separating, which will be gentler, or you can try to bring the palms together if you want to get a more intense pose there. So projecting through the legs, lift the legs, lifting the front of the body, the gaze slightly forwards, lengthening down the arms, possibly lifting the arms away from you. Keep breathing now. See what's happening. Shalamasana. Checking that you're keeping the neck long. And then release when you're ready, release down. Release to the floor for a moment. Softening the arms. We'll do that one more time. So when you're ready, engaging the arms, deciding on the hand position, wrist position. Projecting through the legs, projecting through the arms, lifting the gaze forward. So the feet don't need to be together here. That would be a more intense version, keeping the feet together. So you can let the feet drift. We're exploring bringing the feet together. Gaze forwards and down. And release all the way to the floor. Moving back once again into a child's pose. Now it's going to be uh, enjoyable to place the arms, I think, between the legs there to work the upper back. That pose starts to move more strongly into the upper section of the spine. Releasing round whole of the body, coming into a whole body awareness. Being aware of the legs, the arms, torso, head, sense of the whole body. Tuning in a sense with your mood. Although it's a gentle practice, it's quite challenging. And then inhaling, moving back, draw falls to the prone position. Now interlacing the fingers around the back of the head, the elbows rest lightly on the floor. Feet can be together or slightly apart. I'm going to come up just twice this time into a var variation. So as we inhale, you lift the elbows. This is more intense still. Lift the gaze forwards, lift the legs, projecting through the legs. Breathing now. So the breath is probably going to get quite short and fast, releasing down completely for a moment, surrendering to the floor, relaxing the arms, the fingers, the face. I'm setting yourself up to do that one more time. So the interlace. Um, Interlaced hands behind the head. 
On inhale, we're lifting the elbows away from the floor, lifting the legs, lifting the gaze. Breathing now, powerful position. See if you can lift and hold, projecting through the legs as you lift. And when you're ready, releasing now. Coming through all fours, into child's pose, and release there for a few moments. Completely softening the whole body. So the next uh, couple of poses, quite distinctive in the sequence. I like to come into all fours, come down once again, onto your belly, into the prone position. So these are known as scorpion pose. So they really emphasize the lower part of the body. So I'd like you to take your arms back now. So you're extending your arms down by your side, palms down. And we're gonna work at lifting just one leg at a time. So the head actually stays down. So the forehead rests down or you can rest the chin down. That's more comfortable. In some ways, it's not the most comfortable position for the head in this pose, forehead down or chin down. So when you're ready, you're gonna lift just one leg away from the floor and we can press the opposite foot to the floor to see if we can get a little bit more help with lifting the lifting leg. So you're just lifting one leg away from the floor, so-called scorpion pose, and then release. So you might not get like lots of height, really depends on flexibility as well as strength. And then we'll switch to the other side. So you're lifting the opposite leg now, away from the floor, keep the arms gently extended by your side. and release and just in your own time now try that again on each side exploring this one leg scorpion pose on your own time maybe change the head position trying to keep the pelvis as close to the floor as possible I was level. And release. Doing the other side as well. Breathing. In the pose, static hold. That's it. And release. Coming up now into sitting, looking forwards. So we're gonna go a little bit more slowly now. So I'd like you to bring your the soles of feet together as, as we did at the beginning of the session. And it may be helpful to have a little bit of height under the pelvis so i'm going to put one brick underneath my pelvis underneath my sitting bones to lift the whole body up a little bit and then i'm making a diamond shape here with the legs okay and i wanted to bring the arms down by the side of the body onto the floor and then you're gonna gently lengthen through the spine. So you're growing your spine, vertebra by vertebra towards the crown. And we're not gonna emphasize particularly coming forwards a great deal here, but what I want us to do is to tip forwards over the sitting bones. 
you can bring your hands round towards your feet. And gently, it's really like a gentle lengthening pose. You can allow the gaze to drop, but there's a sense of staying fairly upright and the spine engaged, rather than like a passive folding forwards. As we lengthen actively, gently through the spine, but as into a flexion, coming forwards. Shoulder blades can move down the back. Inner legs releasing with time. But we're not emphasizing coming into a really dramatic forward fold here. It's more like lifting up and tipping forwards from the sitting bones. You can close your eyes. There's a sense of being slightly active through the spine rather than just collapsing forwards, just gently lengthening up and then moving forwards. Reconnecting with the breath. See if we can allow the breath to be free. Broadening across the tops of the shoulders, shoulder blades moving down the back. So maybe for some of you feel like you're holding back from the forward fold here. What I want is to do a general length, active lengthening as well as coming forwards. The sense of being contained within the structure of the pose, containing our energy. And then from there on inhale, gently re-stacking up to the vertical. And then we're gonna extend one leg forwards Take the other leg a bit further out. So you're coming into like a, a version of Janu Shashasana. Again, the hands down by your side. So we're not going to be emphasizing particularly coming into a really bendy, forwardy, bendy type pose. It's more like a lengthening up and moving forward. So moving the hands forwards, you could even bring the hands onto the, onto the shin. But there's a sense of lengthening up up through the vertical axis as well as coming forwards. And yes, here the leg can be a bit more active, okay? So the straight leg can be more active here. So lifting up, moving forwards, lifting up, moving forwards. So all we're doing is we're gently and actively working the back of the body, the whole chain of muscles from uh, the back of the leg, through the back of the pelvis, back of the body, through the spine. Sense of broadening the straight leg foot. Be aware of the toes, from the big toe to the little toe. Feeling what's happening in the pose. Where, what is the experience in the pose? Where is the pose affecting you, working you? A 
keeping them in here and coming back up to the vertical, which is probably not a big movement as we haven't come that far forwards. And then switch legs. Rob to leg going up straight. The other leg coming into the Janu Shishasana version. So we could still be on the support. I'm sitting on one brick here just to give me a sense, a little bit of forward movement. Lengthening up through the body. So we're lifting up, a sense of lengthening up. You could even project the arms up Want to go for a little bit more of a stronger sense of moving up out of the pose as we then come forwards, but not we're not aiming to really bend forwards here. It's more like this uh, moving forwards rather than bending forwards. Moving forward from the pelvis, keeping the spine long. Shoulder blades moving down the back, shoulders broad. Leg, straight leg active. Shoulders broad, shoulder blades moving down the back, active straight leg, sense of moving forwards through the pose. Pivoting from the pelvis, from the sitting bones. Experiencing your body, what's happening now. And then on an inhale, gonna restack, coming up. And then from there, we are now gonna take a uh, a more passive position. So we're going to come back down onto into semi supine. And we're going to do like a really simple pose now. So uh, it could be slightly more elaborate. Uh, if you can, you bring your knees towards you and then wrap your, for example, your right forearm around the legs. So if that isn't going to work, you just place your right forearm on top of the legs. But if you can, taking the right forearm around the back of the legs and you come into a twist. Okay. So if it doesn't work, wrapping, let the uh, arm rest on the top of the legs. And then the other hand you could use as a support for the head, but try to keep the uh, opposite shoulder down. So we're coming into a simple supine twist, passive twist. Uh, the head, I keep centered, so the gaze would be up. You could close your eyes. And allow your body to rest here in Sutta Paravritasana, simple twist. Slightly more intense is the wrapping. It really depends on proportion uh, there, as well as flexibility. More like an issue of proportion. Tuning in with the breath. Allowing yourself to completely arrive 
Whereas arrive as fully as you can in the supine twist. I'm going to pick up one leg as we float one leg up and set ourselves up for the opposite side. So remembering we're trying to keep the shoulders as it were broadened down. The opposite arm could support around the back of the head or just float out to the side, allowing that shoulder to sink, that arm to sink. Noticing the difference in the experience of one side and the other side of the body. How does that feel on this side? But I'm noticing it really quite differently. Definitely sweeter on this side of the body. Okay, then from there, floating one leg up to the center, the opposite leg up. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come up into a seated position, which we could call a meditation posture. Okay, for the last few minutes. So I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky and I'm not gonna leave a Shavasana, okay, this evening. What I'm gonna do is leave more at sitting meditation practice. So make sure you're going to be warm enough, but you could then, uh, as it were, in your own time, you could lie down into Shavasana. Okay, so I just like to take advantage of the opportunity to do a little bit of seated practice. Okay, hopefully that hasn't been too taxing physically that you're feeling like, oh, I really need to lie down now, but you can. Okay, afterwards you can lie down. We're going to do like a 10 minute uh, mindfulness, seated mindfulness practice. So I'd like to, in a way, just re-emphasize these five aspects of our experience. So we're looking to have uh, an easy upright position. Okay, so, you know, if you need to lie down, that's fine as well, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, you know, I've got no idea exactly where everybody's at. You might have had a really long day today. But if you can, for the last 10 minutes or so, coming into an upright position. So feeling the verticality of the spine, feeling your sitting bones, on your support, your knees down. You've got this, as it were, this like triangular base. And feeling from there, the spine stacked up vertebra by vertebra, all the way up through to the crown. come into the vertical axis through the spine. Sense of being rooted through the floor, through the legs, through the pelvis. And feeling how the posture work has stimulated your body. You can feel some even soreness. in certain muscles that we've been working. Noticing where the tension is. It's 
So to begin this, we're going to do this meditation in five sections or we'll look at five aspects of our experiences. To start with now looking at the specifics of the sensations, so looking at specific areas, which area of the body is calling your attention. Feeling maybe the lower back, pelvis, the hips. Being aware of the hands, the upper body, the neck, the head. Just in your own time, your own space. Exploring the specifics of this pose, specific sensations. specific characteristics or attributes. Maybe noticing areas of tension, areas of relaxation. Encouraging your body to let go, releasing the arms, releasing the legs. Releasing around the pelvis. Noticing if there's holding on, tension blocks, resistance even. And then coming into a whole body awareness, second aspect. So if you can feel the whole body from the top of the head, floor, as it were, enveloping the whole body in your awareness, your mindfulness. So we're like one, a large packet of being a package of being, which is you. You know, we have the whole range of experience within that, you know, that package of being pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, Perfect, imperfect. And then a third aspect, tuning in with the sense of your mood. of your emotions, what we call the chitta aspect, chitta, satipatthana, foundation of awareness, the heart mind.
And then being aware of your experience of one of change, transformation, flow, ever flowing, ever changing. Even though there is a sense of continuity, sense of this uh, as one of process. Being aware of this quality of our being, anitya, impermanent. In a way so obvious, but very hard to see. And for a few moments, we're going to focus in on the breath, this fifth aspect of our mindfulness practice this evening, the breath, feeling the breath. Continuing this process of letting go in the body, softening. And then once again, I'd like you to open out your awareness from the breath, being aware of all of us practicing together different places. And in your own mind, there can be a sense of as it were, taking benefit of the shared practice, but at the same time, giving the benefits away to others. And then from here, I'm going to suggest that you set yourself up for a, a period of Shavasana. So without disturbing yourself too much, you're going to move down onto the floor again. So I'm going to suggest you use the bolster if you've got one behind the knees. And a little bit of support for the back of the head. If you need a, to stay warm, then a blanket over the body as well. And you could turn your lights off. Okay, so I'm going to we're going to come into this position. So I'll just set you up here and then I'm going to, as it were, take my leave. So resting down onto the floor. And remembering as you come into the floor, there's three adjustments you can make on your spine. So the first one is to just lengthen the back of the neck. The second position, second adjustment is to broaden behind 
the ribs, like that space between the shoulder blades. And then a third adjustment is the sense of lengthening the lower spine. You could do it the other way, way around. You could lengthen the lower spine, broaden the upper back and lengthen the neck. Okay. So I'm going to suggest you just rest there for, you know, a few minutes. The 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 something will pick you up off the floor. Sure, there'll be something to do. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, but I'm gonna suggest you try and stay there for a few minutes if you can. Like we aim for like ten minutes or so, eight minutes, ten minutes, but without um, being in a rush to go on to the next thing. Okay, so I'd like to thank you very much for your um, coming along, as it were, and we'll see each other next week or not, depending on your schedules. So the idea is we're just going to carry on doing this now until the summer. So you're welcome to join in when and uh, how you want to. Okay, so as, it's, as they say here, buenas noches.